Good morning, everyone. Hi, from Seoul. You're outside of my apartment. Is, is this weird for you? It's weird for me. I am here in Hapjong this morning. I'm meeting up with a friend. <sighs> Crazy, I'm at the Mesentopolis Mall, which was like the new mall when I was living here and now it's like old and kind of abandoned. So, but I'm gonna hopefully have a little bookish day. I'm gonna take you along. I, last night, video coming soon, but last night I read the first book of the Raven Cycle. I shared it with you guys on Instagram. Mm. So I'm trying to hold back and not binge the series because I'm trying to record my reaction and I can't do it when I'm out in public because I would be feral and um, so instead I just got on hold from my library. I waited a really long time. There's a dog somewhere in this mall. Um, I waited a really long time but I got the BTS book behind the story. So I'm gonna read that. That's gonna be my book of the day. It's 500 pages but also there's like a lot of photos so I think it's not gonna be quite as long. Um, I read it while I was on the subway and I'm really enjoying it so far. I love those like you know like Rolling Stone long features. I just love like the lore of an artist before they hit it big. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. Also like just a fun fact the dorm room where they first started um, is very it's in my neighborhood it is very close to my home so when they're talking about all of the members getting horrifically lost trying to find it when they first moved into the dorm i was like babe i know <laughs> i know anyway yeah i am excited and i'm gonna get a coffee uh, before i meet up with my friends so they don't check in for a while um see you at a couple cafes i will be highly caffeinated the next time we talk so just sent my friend to the airport and now I'm heading over to this bookstore that I saw a while ago when I was visiting when I was coming over here to get coffee with a friend but they're closed on Mondays and today's Tuesday so I'm gonna go it is a bookshop cafe they apparently have a lot of like book events um, almost completely in Korean I haven't seen a English event yet but um, we're gonna check it out Oh, 
Hi everyone, I'm home. Sorry if the air conditioner is loud. Um, what a day. That, I know I didn't film a lot in there, um, but that boutique, bookstore, bookshop, whatever, was so nice. It was me, one other girl, the shop owner, and it was just like, he put on um, like a YouTube playlist, but then while he was, he stepped out for a second, and while he was gone, it turned off, and it was just like a library in there. It was like just dead silent, surrounded by but oh. It was so nice. So anyway, um, I'm home now and I'm gonna start making dinner. I'll show you what I'm making. Hold on. Lazy, lazy girl dinner. Oh, hey, so while past Carrie goes and makes her lazy girl dinner, I would like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. I have talked about Skillshare so often, so you guys know that I love them. Skillshare is a wonderful platform for online learning. They have classes ranging from cooking and knife skills which past Carrie needs, but they have how to use Notion and ChatGPT and how to do any kind of hobby craft you could ever think of to skills like coding and UI UX design and stuff like that. Truly anything you could want to learn, um, check out Skillshare. There will probably be a class for you. I actually, if you are interested in making vlogs like one you are seeing right now, I actually have a class on Skillshare just for beginning to vlog. What do you need in terms of actual products um, and what do you need in terms of the mindset you have going into starting a YouTube channel? There will be a link in the description box. The first 1,000 people to click it will get a month free of Skillshare access to every class on the platform. Highly recommend. I will also link my class down below, but really thank you as always to Skillshare and I will let you get back to your dinner now, okay? See ya. So I have an air fryer and I, if you, if you need to know one thing about me, it's that I love a dumpling. Oh my God. I love dumplings so much, but I also don't eat meat. I do eat seafood, fish and shrimp and stuff like that, but I don't eat what normally is in at least Korean dumplings, which is pork. And even if they say like, I'm just a kimchi dumpling or I'm just a shrimp dumpling, there will sometimes with kimchi almost always there will be pork in it so I've been missing my dumplings and if you watch my main channel uh you've already seen this a billion times so I'm really sorry but BBGo made these air fryer or like you can make them a bunch of different ways um dumplings but they're vegan brand or the like sub brand is called plantable fake meat in Korea has not like gone over as well as it has in other countries. Um, so I was really nervous that this would not perform well, but Plantable just expanded and they now have vegan duck garby and hamburger steaks, which like are neither of my favorite things, but I feel like that's a good sign for this venture of BB Go. So I'm gonna make a couple of these, but before I put them in the noisy air fryer, we have another thing to open. It's an exciting day and the air conditioner has not kicked in yet, so I am toasty. Oh, sick. They do give us the light bulbs. Um, you have no idea what it is. Hold on, Whoa, hold on. It's a candle warmer, yeah! So I love candles, especially as Autumn fast approaches. However, Kurt loves to remind me that candles, especially in a small space, we live in a studio, the smoke, it's just like not the most ideal situation. So he gets a little nervous when I burn candles and I, I love candles the second it gets cooler. Um, and I have so many that smell so good and I wanna use them without making my husband anxious. So I got a I got a, I got a candle warmer. Okay, how do we actually plug these in though? Okay, just for right now, I'm going to move the cord at some point, but, oh my goodness, let me go get a candle. I was actually burning this yesterday, which is what made me think of buying one. This is from Boy Smells. It is the, it was a limited edition, but it's redhead, so I had to get it. And it smells amazing. Zoom you in a little bit. So let's see if it does anything. It is what, hey, 
Okay, what time is it? It's 5.29 p.m. It's 5.29. Oh, it feels warm, yeah. I will keep an eye on if it's warming the books <laughs> and then I might move this. Oh my goodness, it looks so cozy. It's much more um, warm in real life. It looks a little cool on my camera. Very excited, so now let's make some dumplings and I'll talk to you about BTS. Hi, slight change of clothes so that I don't get stuff on my white shirt. I know this is gonna be so hot. So good. Anyway, <coughs> breathing in so much steam while I let these cool. Uh, what are my thoughts on the BTS book? Mm, I'm about 30 almost. I'm like 160 pages in and it says it's 400 pages. It says it's 500 pages, but a lot of it is pictures. The formatting of the Kindle version is a little weird, which is nothing like nothing bad with the book. It's just like the Kindle edition's fault. Um, the formatting is kind of funky, but I really liked the first chapter. Um, I thought that the amount, it's, it's kind of like a, don't come for me, but it's low key a glorified Wikipedia entry, but they mix in interviews with the members and so I thought the first chapter did that really well where they were setting up their stories of how the hell did all of them get to Seoul and get together and become trainees like not even debut it was I thought really well done with the amount that the members got to speak and then the amount of just like telling it like it is and the and the kind of information that we were given but as it continues like chapter two and now on to chapter three is reading very much like I can tell that this was combed over by Big Hit as someone who's read more than a few like directly translated things from entertainment companies it feels very much like oh this was written by an entertainment company you know or just like Korean music industry like even journalists like it's not necessarily i'm not saying like oh this was just like fed planted stuff from big hit but like this is also the way that music journalists write and so it just kind of felt like like i said kind of a glorified wikipedia but through the lens of like obviously the entertainment company obviously their management you know so i think and and i think what is doing that is that there are less interview sections like when there are just parts of the book where the members are allowed to talk. That's my favorite part. I'm debating skimming <laughs> to just read their quotes because it's also like I I have been a K-pop fan since like 2006. So a lot of the stuff that they're mentioning is like, yeah, I know this. So I just kind of wonder who the audience is because if I was reading this as a fan, I know half of this stuff, like even as just a vague fan, like someone who I, I was actually really into them probably up until like 2017 and then I just kind of like just me personally wasn't listening to much k-pop at that time but like I was there for their I saw their debut stage like I was there for the beginning and I like I remember all of this stuff there's not a whole lot of stuff that like I don't know yet I haven't learned anything new um, that I didn't know about them so it's like, is it for the fans? Is it for, cause I wouldn't see someone who's like not a fan of BTS pick this up and be like, yes, I wanna read 500 pages about BTS. I feel like it's more of just a historical document. Like I feel like it's gonna be good for maybe brand new fans or fans that maybe have heard of BTS within the past year or, or two who like don't know the stuff that happened before run, I would say. I need you. Um, so yeah, I'm like enjoying it, but it's sort of like just brushing up on stuff that I know. And I, like I said, I'm just a casual fan. Yeah, I would say it's like not a waste of money or time if you are a BTS fan. Like I think that it would be something that would be nice to return to in the future. Like I think a BTS fan would like to have it on their shelf if you're thinking of getting it for a friend who's a fan, whatever. But I just like, I'm confused as to who the audience is for. I'm enjoying it though. It's like I said, I do enjoy reading that kind of content that is like, you know that they, they hit it big. Like something happened and I just love 
reading those kind of struggles. I will say that like um, the translation is definitely in the style of how people translate certain K-pop things. It's better, but there are certain sentences that I'm like, oh, that was directly translated from Big Hit. So I just, I'm hoping that as it continues, because they have said that like the members have said in the book that this kind of from debut until most beautiful moment in life is hazy for them because it's like it was such a struggle and just like so messy that they don't have a ton of memories from that period so i'm hoping that now going from i need you up until present day there's going to be more of just the members talking like let the members speak please so yeah i just want to hear from them you know um, so anyway, I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna keep reading, but I will check in with you a little later when I'm done with my dumplings. Bye! Hi, hello from Seoul Forest, uh, where I just had, I felt like a Disney princess, but I realized I don't want to be a Disney princess. A bird almost landed on me. A rat almost ran over my foot. No. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to give a little update and kind of wrap this vlog up. Um, I'm about 50% of the way through and I can't read this book. Um, and that's, it's frustrating because it's, you know, it's not to say that like, to be clear, BTS did not write this and like, I don't know how much of a hand, I doubt they had much of a hand in it other than just simply being interviewed for it. Um, so this is nothing against BTS, nothing against ARMY, but like this is a bad memoir. Like I said, I don't know who it's written for. It's not written, it's really written like a Wikipedia article. Are they trying to write a memoir where perhaps they could make some kind of have some kind of storytelling element to it like anything this is just like this happened this happened this happened this happened quote this happened this happened this happened this happened quote the translation is very literal it feels like when people translate tweets you know people there are like a lot of translators who have twitters and they will very quickly translate like if another if a k-pop idol tweets they will translate that tweet it's very literal and so it just doesn't sound it's not interesting at all and it's just like a lot of they sold this many units and then they sold this many units and that's twice and that's a, a lot i don't know it was just it's so frustrating because i was excited for them to have a book and it's just bad and i i ended up stopping there's a point where they talk about something and they literally say like this is a thing that most fans know because it's such a big deal and then they go on to describe it in like many, 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 many pages before they even get to a quote from a member. And it's like, if most of the fans already know this happening, why do I need to read many pages about it that are not interesting or funny? Like they just were, it was so dry. Anyway, maybe I'm just a little roughed up from the rat or the mouse, but I'm just really disappointed in this book. And a lot of people messaged me and said they felt the same I'm glad because I didn't want, I know a lot of you guys are ARMY, so I didn't want people to be upset by my review, but it sounds like a lot of ARMY don't even like it. Um, so once again, begging the question, who was this for? I have no idea. Um, so yeah, also, yeah, someone messaged me about, I pointed out one spelling error when they called Jin Jim, but there were many, there were a lot of grammatical errors, a lot of spelling mistakes. It was just very, very odd. Like, was this rushed? Because the whole book is about how thoughtful everything BTS does, everything HYBE Big Hit does is so thoughtful and like so intentional. And this book feels so not thoughtful and not intentional, just kind of a vague money grab. And I just wonder, I wonder. So anyway, um, I'm going to, end the video here. Let me know your thoughts down below. I feel really bad, but have you guys read it? What did you think? What is the purpose of this text? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to head home and um, 
I will see you guys next time. I have a lot of, I have one book that I'm reading that I'm like dying over. So I'm really excited to share that. But um, once again, there is a link in the description box for Skillshare. First 1000 people to click it will get a month free trial of Skillshare. Highly recommend. Um, like I said, my class will also be linked down below, but um, I'm, I'm very excited to hear your thoughts. I know so many of you love BTS, rightfully so. Um, and I'm just perplexed. So I'll catch you later. Yeah. Thanks as always. Bye. Bye.